Hello everyone. How's everyone doing? Sunday again and live stream is um, on once more. We have a few projects um, to attempt today. Uh, those of you who have seen my Instagram story will have noticed the Manchu bow. It's a new bow that I have acquired today. It was a trade where I made a quiver. I also carved it like in the past streams as well and finished it and traded it for this nice bow. Um, we'll go over what we need to do in a few minutes. In the meantime, um, hope that everyone's doing okay. We've got Chief with us today. Say hi, Chief. Hello. Chief is in the background, taking care, making sure that the stream is okay and that the chat is seen too. We'll have to take a break sometime soon in a few minutes, I, I think, because we'll have some movement in the garage. So I'll go for a break for like two minutes or so and then continue afterwards. Uh, so we shouldn't have too many delays. Um, so basically what I have planned today is a very simple um, project on one hand and another thing which is a little bit more of an experiment because I've never done it actually before. Um, so to start off with the experiment is going to be replacing the wrap around the handle of this Manchu bow. It is, um, as far as I can tell, it's either synthetic leather or at least very thin uh, chrome tanned leather which is wrapping the limbs i'm fine with that the texture is nice it's still in very good condition as um as far as i can tell the wood itself i don't know what kind of wood was used for this but I, i'd be very much interested to know um however it, it it is in very good condition the finish on it is not scratched at all it's nice and, and glistening and shiny so it's well polished um so yeah i mean in terms of the actual structure of the bow it's fine the only thing i it's not really a quarrel really it's just that uh this bow is obviously second hand and it's been used but over here um i'll show it better on the other camera in a second but over here there is some wear marks where the arrow um actually touched the handle obviously this is this doesn't have a shelf so it's um like a shelfless bow so the arrow rests on your fingers and obviously it rubs against the leather over here um i have noticed that the grip itself has a different texture than the limbs i'm going to change that when i replace this i'm going to replace it with some nice sheepskin uh, leather this is genuine leather i have acquired it some time ago and it's nice and smooth textured so it will go along nicely with the limbs um as well it's nice and supple so it won't wear off uh, wear out my hand the sort of ring of leather there's another separate like kind of distinct ring of leather this one over here um is is not suede it's just inverted leather so yeah so we'll go for break for a minute or two and then we will be back to get started
And we're back. I apologize for that brief intermission. So, yes, um, let's pick up where we left off, where basically I described that we are going to change the wrap of this handle and the top ring over here seems to be like suede, but instead is just um, the flesh side of the leather because when you peel it a little bit, very tough to show on camera, but basically, so it's like black on black, it's quite, a little bit difficult, but if you peel back, you will see the sort of the surface of the leather underneath. So I think um, the maker of this bow at the point at that time thought that the flash side would be a little bit more resistant. And to be fair, it makes sense because wearing of the flash side is a little bit less evident than wearing the top side, the, the surface of the leather. So, I mean, I think I will do the same thing. Um, I might just fix where it is, but I kind of want to get rid of this wear mark over here. Again, it's tough to see on camera. I'll show it on the on the other camera in a second. Maybe we'll have a better idea. And even with lighting, it should be a little bit better over here. Now, for the second project that I would like to do today is a very simple project, which is a belt. I've already cut the straps over here. A very simple belt using this buckle, which is a nice brass buckle, um, for my quiver. Because the quiver that I made, the first quiver that I ever made, is the one that I use for archery, and it is up on Instagram. I used a carving from a Dark Horse Workshop at the time when I when I carved it. Um, and however, it needs a, a new belt because the one that I made was a little bit too thin. I didn't have thicker leather available at the time. Um, but I might um, sort of make it a little bit uh, better. Maybe carve something on it, even if it's just a cross hedge design. Uh, that should be fine. But uh, we'll get to it in a second. That won't take very long to make. It's just the dyeing and the and the resisting process that will take some time. But other than that, should be okay. Uh, so I think it's best if we get started with the bow. So let me swap over to the other camera and let's see what we are dealing with now. Okay, so um, we're working a little bit uh, closer to the work, the, the leather working station today. I think I might just stand up, it's just easier to work this way. Okay, just a little bit easier. Um, okay, there, good. So let's talk about the bow. Um, as you can see on camera, uh, the, the wood is really nice. It's got a nice uh, finish to it. I really would like to preserve that. So that is not going to be changed. The texture on the leather wrap is like this um, very smooth uh, leather. It might be synthetic. The only reason I won't change it is that I would have to redo the wraps. I don't have that kind of string available on hand, and even if I did, it would be a bit of an issue, a bit of an effort to do. So maybe sometime in the future. On the back, it is uh, strapped using a lace, a leather lace. Uh, I can't feel any knots, so I am to assume that they have been glued shut and then wrapped over, which is why the wraps are not so tight. Um, the same for the handle. Now, the handle has this texture. Oh, it's very visible on camera, but it's like this cracked skin texture. And this is the, the, the other ring which I was talking about earlier, which is sort of feels like suede, but it's just the flesh side of the leather, right? Um, and basically, if I were to sort of open it a little, a little bit over here, you will see that um, it's just the, the surface of the leather. So I think the first thing I would like to do is try to remove this. I want to understand whether this goes under the wrap, which I fear it does, but it doesn't seem to go over the, under the wrap all the way around. So it's just the, the front. Now, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Um, I might just see if I can pull it free. I mean, the glue doesn't stick very well to the surface of the leather. I mean, probably... It doesn't feel like contact cement. It feels probably like something like PVA glue, like white glue, wood glue, that sort of thing. So we'll have to see. But it is quite tight. I think it, should, it could be that it, it actually wraps underneath. Now, if we go all around, the glue mostly seems to have peeled off all around. So what I'm going to do is start by cutting close, very carefully, but also close to the the wrap okay just lower the camera so you can see a little bit better what i am aiming for and i think i'll use an exacto knife for this because really and truly it, it it just needs a quick incision without cutting into the wrap itself okay it's a little bit tough to see i'm sorry if um 
uh, it's it just everything is black and in color so it's, it's a little bit tough to see but I think we'll make it work so um, I'm going to try and find the area where this leather is exposed I think somewhere around here, I think we can start just nicely. Let's start there. Okay. I mean, over here it's got like a harder texture, which leads me to believe that they use super glue for this. Super glue actually tends to harden as a glue. Um, not just a deer, so it, it feels like very, it's, it's hard. You can also sort of hear it on the microphone probably. So that scratching sound isn't obviously, isn't the same as actual leather. So probably cyanacrylate was used to keep it in place. Um, I do not have any solvent to remove it, but I, I can probably cut it flush and it will just the same. I'm going to be very carefully working my way around. Just to try not to <laughs> cover my work with my head as I often do. Um, okay, I think this will be cut a little bit neater. Okay, so I mean. So far we're managing is just that this piece has glue on it and I think it's not even glued on the on the inside. Let's see. I'm not even cutting, I'm just pressing the blade along my cuts. Just to have a uh, more control on, on it. So this part seems to be a little bit tougher to cut through, so I might have to actually cut. Okay, yeah, yes. Okay. All right, we managed to remove the glue part as well. Good, 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 good. I'm happy about that. Okay, so let's clean up the edges so we have a nice clean uh, surface to use. Yes, I mean my suspicions were confirmed. The the piece of leather used to go under the under the rack as well. So yeah, just going to clean it up a little bit. There seems to be some sort of leather wrap underneath as well, which I'm not going to be removing, of course. I'm going to leave as is. Now uh that part is clear. So I think what I'll do is I will start working on that because I will need to glue it to uh, with a contact cement. I'd rather have it with a contact cement so that way it doesn't uh, come off. Now, I'm using this piece of scrap leather. It's sheepskin. It's nice and supple. It's got a nice finish to it. Yeah, and then... yeah, hey, Rocknar. Hi. Welcome. So, um, I need to make sure that I have enough material to work with, but I mean, I think I think I have more than enough. If need be, I have another huge piece over there. I'm just trying to maximize the use of this one. So um, perhaps I should let's remove the let, let's remove the wrap first, and then we can work on on everything. So I'm going to cut off. Um, I'm going to start cutting off the. So where are okay? Okay, so it seems that um there were no knots tied, it's just everything is pressed together um and possibly glued with PVA glue. So this shouldn't be too much of an issue to remove. In fact I can just un undo them by hand. And it doesn't seem to have a lot of glue underneath either. Working on yes, we're working on replacing the wrap for this Manchu bow. Bless you, Cheek. <laughs> Thank you. So it's starting to get really warm in here in this workshop, so soon I'm going to have to get the fan out. Come on. Let's see if we can. For some reason, I can't. There we go. There we go. 
I just acquired this bow this morning. I traded it for a quiver, which I did last time. Um, this is good. I sort of want to make give it a little bit of a, a fresher life, sort of. It's in very good condition, so I have nothing to complain about that. So. It's just fiddly uh, because it's not a, you know, it's not a regular shape. So it moves all around and. So I'm also noticing that the strings go under the wrapping, but I can't feel them. So it could be like just the tip of the strings. So um, it's just very lightly glued. So I get, get rid of that immediately. Now, let's see about these. I think at this point it's best to just cut them clean. And whatever is under the wrap is under the wrap. I mean, it doesn't alter the shape. So. Just trying to. Okay, good. Okay, so. Top, bottom. And for now we need, just need to move this out of the way. Now, we can transfer shapes ah, Okay, so, we can transfer shapes and this seems to be like um, just a regular rectangle cut out of leather. Uh, I wonder which side would be best to use. I think it's best to use this side, so we'll have a little bit of a free space over on this side. And uh, we can, can definitely. I know for a fact that this is square because when I cut it back, then I I used a square to make it. So, so basically, I just need to mark uh, where my cuts need to go, and for that. I'll use an awl, I'll just poke a hole where it needs to end in a corner and a hole in every corner, okay? I've got my marks. I I don't recall this leather, I don't recall this leather uh, describing very well, but actually, yeah, not bad, okay, let me use that. Okay, so. Cut this here. Now, sharp knife. Sharp, I don't need that much blade. I can use much less than that. Okay, so we go and that's one cut. Just clean up the corner because the corner is always going to curl out. That should be good enough. And now this side. Okay. Cool. So, so these are the sides. So these are where we need to um, stitch our holes. So for string, I'm kind of torn between cutting straps of the same kind of leather and just weaving them through and maybe gluing them. I'd rather not glue them, I'd rather like tie them securely. Or using some sort of string. I used to have string. I don't anymore. I thought we had. Like the wrapping string. No, no. I can't seem to find it. Um could also use proper thread, like um this kind, for example, this is stitching thread, wagged stitching thread. I think the wax might actually help us in the way to add something. Yeah, here it is. Is it? Oh. Yeah. It's 
wag the thread because it's a little bit thicker but i think it's a little bit too thin i might have to just crisscross it like i usually do like when i'm stitching two sides together now however before we get to that we need to cut the rest of it right the ring that goes on top hmm? I've got Okay. So let's see. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit. Um, this is what's weird to me that this this one the, the the upper ring is not equal to the. It's fine. We'll just cut what we need. So let's use another piece of scrap. So, so, okay, we just need to cut okay, and just clean up the edge, which is somewhere over here. Okay, that will do. This probably will not have uh, stitching holes in it. It's just a ring. Now let's check on both sides. So basically, just to have a quick recap, uh, we're replacing the leather wrap on this bow. Okay, now this used to be on the lower part and that's going to be replaced by the sheepskin. And the top part, which was like reversed leather, slash side up, is what we are replacing over here. I'm noticing this isn't quite as long, so I will need to recut it again and use about five mil more than I cut already, which is fine, which is why we have scraps. Um, yeah, this one will do just fine. It's going to be a bit of a difficult project to see today because it's a lot of uh, same tone colors, same colors on. on each other so you'll have to forgive me for that okay clean up the corners Let those curl out now let's see how much of this I will need the sheepskin leather that I have doesn't seem to stretch a lot so I'm not going to be counting on it to stretch so. so somewhere about I'm just going to mark where it overlaps somewhere about there okay let's move the scraps out of the way this one we don't need we don't need Okay, so now this should be done. Let's see how this compares. It compares a little bit better. Now, yep, it just about touches, and we'll just remove the excess later on. So, this is good. This is good. I think what I'm going to do on this side is just punch holes so that I can use the waxed thread. Now, to punch holes, I can use a number of options. Usually on vegetable tanned leathers, I would use something like an edge groover, okay, or a groover basically where you go and carve out a line. Unfortunately, this is not veg tanned leather, so it will be a little bit difficult to work on. So I'm going to be using um, either a scratch all and then mark the lines, or I can use something like this, which is a wing divider. I set my distance and this will keep it constant and just scratch align carefully because it's very pliable and flexible leather on either side okay 
the lines are visible to me, maybe not so on camera, but um, maybe that's me. Let me see if I can get them. It's a very faint line in a corner. Now, for <clears throat> when I am using, set, when I'm saddle stitching, I like to use chisel punches, which are these flat punches, which, you know, they cut slots in the leather. However, when I am using something more like this sort of crisscross stitch, the cross stitch or not but with crisscross i like using diamond punches because it allows sort of the leather to uh, the, the string the thread to seat in like in angles so it's a little bit easier to use so let us start with this now the important thing is to have <laughs> so the important thing is to have the same distance on either side so if for example let me give let me show you like if the first hole is about five mil from uh from the edge then obviously on the other side it needs to mate with it so they need to mate together so that is good to mark now you can either do it with the with the punch itself or use something like the wing divider to just poke a hole and then start off from there. That should be accurate enough for our use. Now. I got my marble underneath, chopping block, like a cutting mat, whatever you want to call it and i'm going to have to work a little bit and cover okay rawhide mallet never use steel hammers on steel tools it will ruin your your tool that way so one firm whack you can see that the punch dug into into the block underneath and then we can move on try to keep a straight line And if you find that the punch is getting stuck in the leather, this is especially true in vegetable tanned leather. Get a piece of beeswax or, or wax, whatever, and just poke, just poke the tool in the wax, and it will lubricate it a little bit. This is the same for hole punches and other kind of carving tools that you may use, which require to go through the leather. And leather is a very grabby material, so you need to really do this quite often. and then it just glides out okay now here i'm noticing that if i do a full three punches it will get me too close to the edge so i'm going to move one back and now you can see that i have holes let me see oh, there we go we've got holes in our sheepskin in our leather i'm going to do the same thing on the other side however i'm going to start on the right hand side rather than the left to have matching holes now i can also go counting them and make sure uh, that i have the same amount of holes there and that's important because if i have extra holes uh, at one point i'm going to have string uh, thread which has nowhere to go Now, if I'm doing this correctly, which I should be because I am following a line and I mark my starting point on either side, the last punch, the last punch should be one back. So, as I, as you can see, the one, now this would be very close to the edge, so I'm moving one back. So that should have my, all my holes aligned with each other. Cool. Good. Okay, so I can see that I sort of deviated a little bit from the line over here. It's not such a big deal, to be honest. Uh, this is the part where it's going to stretch most, so I think it will get hidden. Um, I, th I think I think I can get started on this, so this this should be fine. I don't think I need the rawhide mallet any longer. I think I need the 
punches either for now. Uh, perhaps it might be good to just poke the holes with the scratch oil, just to tight widen them a little bit, have the needles go through them a little bit easier. This is especially useful in um, patch and leather. So in the meantime, uh, while I'm doing this, a little bit of a tedious task. Are there any questions from or comments um, in the chat? Feel free to post your comments there. I, uh, I've, I'm keeping an eye out. Chief is keeping an eye out on, on the for them as well. So yeah. Okay. So that's one side. Done on the other side as well. I'm just trying to be careful not to pull too hard on the leather. I don't want to tear it. It probably will not tear, but I don't want to risk it at this point. Okay. So <clears throat> started on that we're almost done. I think we can actually start wrapping things up as it were <laughs> so um, here's the question do I want to put contact cement underneath or do I want to keep it as is so that I can replace it in the future and I think I will want to replace it in the future so no contact cement under this for sure I'll probably put contact cement under this so Yes, let's put, um, how should I just stitch it tight? I think I'll stitch it tight. So, because probably this is the part that is going to get ruined the most, not the other. So I think I, I will also stitch this. Just to make sure I have a tight fit, I'm just going to check it again on the bow and see how much of a leeway I have. And this seems to be like just about touching. So if I cut back about three mil, maybe two mil, it will give me enough of a gap so that I can tighten with the strings, with the with the threads. I've said strings so many times instead of threads. This day it's ridiculous. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball it. Seems like good enough. Okay. Now four prongs. Just about perfect. Will work. Just to make sure I get it um as deep. Perfect. Good. Now where are we going to start? Let's say there. So there's a hole there and a hole there. It's just going to be one punch on either side. So one side, it's mate on the other side. Should probably have done it on the other side, but the other, the flesh side doesn't mark as well. So. Just going to use the scratch all again to poke the holes a little bit wider. Okay. All right. Good. So how are we doing? Cool. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Corso Workshop live stream. Today we are working on uh, replacing a leather wrap for a bow and soon be working on belts as well, I'm making a belt, a very quick simple vegetable tanned leather belt. So this won't need any longer, move it to one side, this I need, a sip of coffee, great, great, okay. Let's get started on this. Now, it's going to be a little bit awkward trying to 
Hey, Jennifer. Thank you for joining. The leather would stretch. Yes, the leather would stretch. Uh, however, I found that this sheepskin leather isn't too stretchy, so I'm not going to really risk it so much. I left about a two, one to two mil gap, so that when I stitch it, uh, it I, I will have a little bit of grip on it. I will tighten it. As I'm seeing this, I'm wondering if I should use like white thread instead of black. White would be a nice contrast. No, this will be inverted, so of course. I think I think I will use a white white. It's a nice contrast, black and white. Hmm. Let's have a quick uh poll in chat. What do you think I should use? Should I use black or white thread to contrast? Should I use like black to go along with it? I'd like to know. What do you think, Chief? Chief is going for white. Okay. I think I would go for white as well. So, here are the options, black or white. And black doesn't show, so it would be nice and camouflaged. What do you think, Chief? <laughs> Come for an inspection then. White? I think so too. Pink white. Okay, I think we're going with white. So, we'll need the needles. I have curved needles because it just makes my life easier. You don't need curved needles to stitch something like this. It's just I happen to have them, so I like to use them. Cool, 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 cool. That's um, that is way more than I need. But now, for those of you who have never seen me do this before, basically the way I hook the thread on is to pass it through the eye, the needle eye, and then pass the needle through the thread on itself. And that will allow me to just hook it there without having to tie knots. So this is a very simple technique. Now, um, this is the top over here. Remember, also there was the mark. So there's the cones. Okay. So I need to have to hold it with my ties because I don't have a clamp which I can use. So I think the best thing to do is start from the back. <laughs> I don't know if my mm. family can be overheard in the background. But it's in Maltese. <laughs> okay. Yes, the leather will stretch as much as I need, so that's fine. I'm not going to tighten too much at the beginning. I'll tighten everything in the end. It's just two stitches as in two crosses, so it's not going to be really difficult to 
go and stretch. And I'm not gonna go to go and to the bottom. Then I I will align everything with the curve did this just make this a little bit easier, that's all. So I have to have the right under. Okay, let me see if I can sort of get you a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, now um, I think I would like to <coughs> Go back and sort of do another cross here, which should be okay. I should be able to do that. So one thread goes there, the other one because it's uh, one over there. Okay, cool. Now, while I'm here, I would like to tighten everything. So I'll start by holding the strings over here and tighten against the top. Perfect. Pull on the strings Mal to tighten the bottom. Hey, Mal. <laughs> and now let us simulate. So the same pattern. This will go under here. And this one under here. There we go. Got it. And now we have three axes, and we can tighten it. And that's fine. I'll be back in a few minutes. Remove the C there. Oh, okay. Sure. It's a comment by Jennifer. Hey Jennifer, okay. I should have it on my phone then. Okay. Mel said good morning. <laughs> okay, so I'm uh, just try tying a reef knot. Okay. Now, I'm just going to pass the needles underneath everything. and cut off the excess slightly under the leather. Perfect. That's nice and hidden. Okay, now we need to do the same thing for this, but instead this time we are going to use the nice um, leather side. You can see it will have some leeway to stretch as well. Okay. I think what I would like to do is just really refine the edge over here. So for example, over here, it's a little bit bold. So I can clean it up. Okay. Hmm. Let's see if I can. I see what they did. So they did it the other way around. They did it like this. They started. So this I've got a bit of an excess. But like this, I should not have. So it gives me a little bit of a mark there, and I can always trim the axis. Alrighty then. So I need a bit of a longer string. I need to re-thread the needles. I'm getting really warm now. So let's go back to the original position. There we go. 
Sorry. Cool. Now, I need a bit of a longer thread. Usually, when uh, stitching, uh, in my latest short, I said that I use about four times the length of the stitch that I need to do. On smaller pieces, I use about I use about five or six times longer. Um, for the simple reason that I don't want to be caught with a little bit of uh, leeway and I can't thread the needles properly. So it's about one, two, three, four, and five. Let's do six just in case. Thread is very cheap. So it's not worth wasting time over. And just use the same needles using the same threading technique as before. There we go. Come on. You have to thread it about the center of the thread because otherwise it will uh, tear off. We don't want to do that. Okay, so this is done. Let's see if I can do this without major issues. Major issues, sir. <laughs> yeah, Chief doesn't approve of my jokes. Um, I think at this point I'm going to just. Jennifer. What? Jennifer. Hey, welcome back, Jennifer White. Now, um, I'm going to. How am I going to do this comfortably? I think setting, uh, standing up might be just just might be the best way to do this because it's just not worth the hassle. Um, yeah, let's, oh, my back, okay, so, this will go on like, like this, actually let's do it this way around because the bottom is a little bit I wonder if I should just glue it. That way I can sort of position it in any way I want. Then sort of stitching will be a little bit tougher. Let's try stitching first. If, if need be, we'll glue it. Okay, I'm just going to put it in its place. It's going to be somewhere here. Perfect. And then I'll start stitching. Now, since this is going to be a little bit tougher, no. since it, wait a minute, since this is going to be a little bit tougher to um, get access to all the the stitches, I'm going to have to tighten it as I go along, yeah? Uh, yes, um, no, yes, so yes, on, as a rule, yes, but not in my experience. And what I mean by that is that I've never, I've always used the same kind of thicknesses of leather. Um, so I've never had the need to uh, sort of change the thickness of the thread but i would assume that um thicker thread would look nicer on thicker leather and th i think that would make sense now don't don't you think so chief um however that being said as i said it's not something that i have experience with what did i do here i did something wrong yeah i did this one is, is on the wrong side This should be one hold on. Okay. 
Yeah, and so then I can just stitch my way back up. Uh, this isn't very visible right on camera. So let me change the camera again so I can get it maybe on my side. So let me just move along some of the wires. Hello there. <laughs> this way I can. Using one camera is not enough. Fair in a live stream, I need to have multiple. Uh, in the new workshop setup, I'll, I'll be better equipped, I promise. Uh, about a year from now. So, let's just see. What are you laughing at? It's real. There you go. Is this a little bit better? Let's turn you around over here. There we go. That might be a little bit better. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> so I saw. <laughs> um, on purpose, because then, okay, so the idea is to always skip a point, right? So it's a set of stitches, a space, a set of, set of stitches, a space and I keep on doing that so when I go all the way down I can then go all the way back up and fill in those gaps that way I will have tension on both sides okay now when I tighten that kind of makes sense now one thing to note is that I don't tighten outwards I tighten downwards that way you tighten evenly. I could have also cut this a little bit thinner, to be honest, uh, as in narrower and could have shaved off a little bit, but lessons learned, mistakes made, lessons learned. Also, one thing of note is to, um, I'm trying to keep the stitches, the overlap of the stitches um, in the same pattern, okay? So it's always, um, I believe it is always right, left over right. So first stitch I'll do will be the right stitch and then I'll do the left stitch. Yes, white was the rice was the better choice for for this. Whenever I'm describing white and black stitches, I feel like I'm doing a South Park joke. For some reason. Okay. down there is a little bit of a ridge in the middle but that's fine it's still comfortable to hold okay just trying to have everything even I do have a little bit of excess leather Now, this is going to be a little bit different, so instead of going one hole down, I'm going to go one hole across. So I'm not going to be skipping anything here. And again, tighten downwards. Now from here, I can work my way back up, except um, here I'm... Since it, this is not the right number of holes that I have on either side, I, I did I would have another set of um, stitches further down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and cross over to the other side so I can start another stitch from here. So that should be easy enough to do using the curved needles. Go out over here. Okay. 
and the same on the other side. And then we'll keep on following the same pattern. However, since we are going up, now I need to use the left stitch first. I should have enough to use and I'm going to go over there. This way I have Why is it not poking through? There you go. What? We're halfway up now, so we're almost done with this as well, and then we can see how well it feels. Come on. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky to get it in the right orientation, especially since these needles have a sharp tip, so they tend to dig into the leather. Um, ideally, you would use um, blunt tip needles for this purpose. However, I do not own curved blunt tip needles, and as you can imagine, this is much easier using curved. Come on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Man, do you actually have bees? Never knew that. Are you an atheist? Huh? What? I love it. Don't forget to charge, eh? Okay. I, I, I mean, I used <clears throat> about five times the length, about six times the length of the, of the thread. And I still think it's not enough. I then I will manage, but it's just not as comfortable. But we're almost through, as you can see over here. Last two stitches to go through. stitch then we'll start tying things off come on there we go so that's one this is the other come on why is this not cooperate it's always the last one that doesn't cooperate there we go it's there Okay, so the, obviously now you can see that the threads are poking out of the leather instead of poking in, so tying a knot out here will be unsightly, so what we'll do is we'll go back one stitch and go up, again down one stitch and up, Pretty easy to do, okay, and then we'll just tie a reef knot or a square knot, a box knot, whatever you want to call it, over here. Okay, once that is done, I usually like to tug the needles and poke them somewhere over here. Okay, so they come out about 
like an inch down or so and the, the, the tension of the strings themselves will just keep them plugged in there okay so tighten that and then cut off the excess without cutting the stitches and there we have a nice wrap okay so let's keep up with the chat uh, well, they come off into the garden, we put them water and sugar, water in this time of year, bees are very important, of course they're very important. It's illegal to own a hive in the city though, I can imagine. I have some too, they live in the building I don't use too often, they made the hives in the walls and ceilings. Oh, that must be so nice. Um, Like over here in Malta we have the Maltese honeybee, which is an indigenous species, Um, however it's also endangered, as you can imagine. So, yeah. I mean, beekeeping is something which always fascinated me. I mean, I don't think I'll be good at it, but, I mean, if I had the land for it, I would actually look into beekeeping. Now that Chief started getting concerned now. <laughs> well, it beats an aquarium. No, as in, I'm bad with fish. I, fish would definitely die under my care. Right now. <laughs> There's no hope for the fish. No, there's no hope for the fish, no. And our bees might survive because, uh, you know, they're, they're independent, I suppose. Yeah, there's an, there's a, uh, an extension over there if you like. Okay, so let's reposition the camera. Let's have a look at our handiwork. Uh, it's definitely not perfect. I can definitely fix it a little bit, make it look a little bit neater. Just a second then. I've done some beekeeping in my youth, it's amazing. I can imagine. It would be really cool to have like your own source of beeswax for leather working. I would love to have that. Huh? Honey for cooking. Honey for cooking as well. Honey for mead making. That's something I want to do as well, like soon. Well, soon in the future when I have the space for it, I'm going to have the space for it. And again, Chief once again is concerned, <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to make my own mead. What? Okay, so you want to contractualize all my what you can projects, can. <laughs> what I can or can't do? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to be making rocket fuel much. Okay, so uh, I, <laughs> I swear I must be on some sort of list by now. Like America wouldn't let me go in the country. All the weird things that I've searched on the internet how to make. Just for the sake of knowing, yeah. I mean anyway. So this is the wrap that we just finished. It's slightly proud in the middle, but I can press it in place. I can tell that the bottom here is a little bit like too far flared so i think i'm going to just use some leather shears and try to sort of see if i can fix it a little bit hmm. let's see that's because i'm, I'm also working like and the propolis, the propolis, yeah, I think, extremely good for battling infection, yeah, the propolis, I, you've had people come over to the pharmacy and ask for it, yeah, yeah, okay, so I'm happy with the, happy with how this feels, the bottom is a little bit cushy because the letter is a little bit um, lighter, so it's not as tight, but the top is very snug, and I don't think it will move about very easily if it happens to move about i can just as easily take this off replace it and do another one so um yeah i'm, I'm happy with this i'm very happy with this this is good nice smooth wrapping and yeah shall i uh, string it so i can show everyone what this looks strong yeah let's do it so this is the bottom Uh, let me just remove the string keeper. Now, obviously, it is not going to be tuned, so it's not going to be at the right. It's not going to be at the right 
thingy, uh, you know, length of string. If you ever have the opportunity to try, it's an amazing activity. I would honestly love to. Oh, wait, no, this has to be before this. It has to be strung this way because otherwise it won't string. All right. And take it easy, guys. It's my first day owning a Manchu bow. Huh? No. Oh, because I'm not stringing it properly. I'm used to long bows. Okay. This is the way to do it. There we go. Oh no, it's not done properly here. Okay, now it is. And this is, let me just turn the big camera over here. Done. This is what a manchu bow looks like when it's strung. Okay. Okay, obviously I'm not stringing it. Uh, oh. uh, there's chief back there, but no. <laughs> So the handle seems to be just fine. Perfect. So that's part one of the live stream complete. I will uh, unstring it because it's actually not very good for the bow to leave it strong when not in use. Just have to use a string keeper. It is quite pretty. I have to admit, I'm quite happy to get. I'm quite happy to own it now. A friend of mine, Claude, um, ha has a Manchu bow. It was the first Manchu bow that I sort of came across, and I've always wanted one. It's just I, I find it difficult to justify getting a new bow when I have a very nice Falco bow, which is a long bow. Um, so let's keep this here for now. Good. On to part two. So let's clear up a little bit over here. Let's get rid of all this extra crap that we don't need. <laughs> cool so now let's work on something else scrap file goes up there now we'll be making a belt for the quiver the quiver is upstairs i will go get it later to make sure that everything fits However, first, uh, first problem, this is the longest length I could cut from my piece of leather that I have. And as you might imagine, <laughs> my, belly. <laughs> my belly is getting big because I'm going to blame it on COVID, but my belly is getting big. So I need to make this a little bit longer because I need to account for the belt buckle. Okay. And that's just having like an, a one inch tongue is just silly. To be fair, I do wear it a little bit lower. So still um so what i have to do is i'll have to extend it however to extend it i need to have clean cuts on the side so let's start with those now belt making is a very simple um endeavor maybe i, maybe I can skive this a little bit yes i'm using a skiver to sort of remove Ooh, I, I removed a lot there okay it's fine i can use this as an extension Okay. Hey, mistakes. Here we go. Mistakes do happen, see? Okay. I'll use this as the extra. Now I skived too far in, so I made it too thin. Never used a skyver before, so. <laughs> I've always seen it used, but I've never used one myself. Okay, so let's uh, shake it up a little. It does have a lot of flesh on the side, so I'll try to be a little bit careful this time. A bit more careful. I, I just want to remove most of this like fuzz there is underneath, because that's always going to end up sort of fluffing about, you know? I think actually I can probably send it as well. Let me see. Let me try it on the scrap piece first. Because it might actually make it worse. Mm. Hmm? Why? Yes, but we don't mention that. Yes, yes, yes. Or you want me to show you how? Okay. Well, uh, this seems to be. 
working somewhat. I think I'll use this technique. Okay, so it's messy, but it does get rid of most of the fuzz. So I'll get a bit of a bigger piece. Coolio. noticing that sending in one direction is better because it doesn't peel off more fibers. See? This one. My, what a mess. Okay. Ideally, you would skive this, but I am not trusting myself after that failed attempt. So, uh, I'll use the skiver in a different way. I think. We'll have a look in a second. So, it's best actually clear this up because one side I don't want that to be in my texture. So, I'm just going to very quickly clean this up. clean everything properly afterwards. Alrighty, so so as we said, um, this isn't long enough. Um, this is a little bit longer, but still not long enough. So first we need to clean the edges. I have a nice square over here. Line up the square, fold it tight. Right, and cut this off. Okay, so nice square edge, same on the other side. It's my fault because I'm actually not I'm flexing it too much. There we go. Maybe you should cut it a little bit cleaner as well. So in a few millimeters. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That's good enough. Now, the way I am going to extend this belt is quite simple. I like, here's the thing. I can just take this end of the leather and add onto it. However, that will result in possible, not, not certain of course, but possible different coloration when I get to dye it, even though this is cut from the same piece of leather and they're like literally straps which are next to, which were cut next to each other. So there's not going to be a lot of variance, but I think I'm, I like to think that it's good practice. So I'm going to um, see how much more I need of my measuring tape here. So, well, so I need about 48 inches, about. So a bit more, a bit less. So this is about 43 and a half. Now I will also need to close this because of the buckle. So let's start measuring from here roughly. So that's about 41 inches. I need another seven inches. Uh, let's do them eight. So we'll have a little bit more. Yeah, about eight, I think is fine. So let's mark. I'm marking um, this point here because this is going to be the middle of the oblong punch, um, you know, the slot punch to put the back buckle through. Now, 
from here I need to measure half of 4 to 1 and that is 20.5 and this is where I'm going to have this is the middle of the belt exactly so that I'm going to cut over here this is going to be a, a cut and I'm going to insert 7 inches from the other belt here okay so this I will need in a second never have enough surfaces in a workshop it's ridiculous so first let's start with this cut so basically the end result is going to have two joints I might even give it two different colors I mean that is completely doable I think I'm going to go and completely do it and in, in brown light brown like the cognac that i have that i used recently on on the quivers it's a very simple light brown very common um else i might just have like a black section in between the two brown ones what do you think so like the belt will be in three parts so like brown and brown but the back will be black weird But then it will have to segment off a lot more. I'll have it all brown then. Why all brown? No, no, this will have just ah, okay. Part. Legitimate advice. Okay, so I need to square off. See, the chief is also not just the chief creative officer, but he's also the chief fashion officer for this show and this channel, so. <laughs> Never said you just me. I said that you choose what I wear. <laughs> Straight to my face. Okay, so I'll clean that better because it's not straight. So let's cut. Let's cut nine inches. Yeah, nine inches is about here. Going to make a mark. Okay, so uh, one thing that I used to do. What's wrong? Yeah, so on the whiteboard there's a sum of seventy-two plus five. The thing is this: that's not something that I needed to do. That's one. That was from when I was doing the belt with Elisa. So we were doing. That's for Elisa, wow. for my cousin's daughter. Not for. I don't want to do seventy-two plus five. Why thank you, Mel. <laughs> I am always right. I call that I I, I smell nepotism. Preference. Jennifer, why is it said whatever size of a workshop you build would never be large enough? That is so true. So true. It's it it is. I mean I can have this whole garage and I still wouldn't have enough space. Hmm? 72 plus 5. She's still laughing at the 72 plus 5 sum on the board. So, um, usually what, the way I would attach them, these two pieces of belt together, would be with the cross stitch technique that you just saw me use on the, on the wrap. However, over here I think I will skive the edges, glue them together so that they are um, I, as in a little bit tighter and more aligned. I'm not sure. Um, skiving basically is uh, when you're cutting the leather at a slant, at an angle, exposing some of the flesh underneath the surface, and then you cut the other side 
in opposing directions. And that way, when you mate them together, you've got no overlap and they look very neat. Uh, the thing is that I am not exceptionally neat when it comes to these sorts of things. Um, should I just try? Because even here, I mean, the, these angles aren't cut really neatly, so maybe the sky will hide some of it. I think that's what I will do. So let's use the scratch all. And I'm going to mark a centimeter in. And hopefully that won't show too much on the on the final. At least it won't show because I'm skiving this off. So this will be the top. No, this the top will be skived off. And let's do the same on this side. This isn't square. Tell you what, this needs to be honed. There we go. Still not perfect, mind you, but better. Okay, now, you can skive it using a regular knife and just cut it at a 45 degree angle, you can use a skiving knife like this, thing is, I'm not sure I can manage, but I'll try. And this shaves like small amounts, depending obviously on the depth of cut that you do. Oh, I'm cutting into the cutting mat, I guess because that's what it's for. Perhaps a combination of both would be wiser. Good triangle. And then I'm going to stitch just the middle after gluing. And this might be a foolish idea, but let's let's try it. I've never tried this before. I don't have a benchtop skyver, which would make my life so much easier. But hey, everyone starts from somewhere, and this is where I'm starting from. Cool. Let's see if I can. Now, here's the tricky part. On the back of this, I have to mark, which isn't going to be easy at all, I think. Well, okay, not bad. Never had to mark on the flash side, so. And of course, I might be on the wrong side, because this is the part that needs to be part of the oblong. Cool, okay, next. Now, no, this side. Man, I'm all over the place today. Okay, so let's sky this bit. Now, on one side we sky the top, on this side we're going to sky the bottom so that they meet and mate. Okay. I think that works just fine. Mm. What is this? No, it needs to be a bit flatter. Cutting off the extra fuzz on the end. 
if I do the same on the other side as well so that they mate nicely. Using a very sharp knife is critical for this operation because otherwise it will just grab onto everything and start cutting and we don't want that. Using the, uh, using the inner side of the blade would be a good idea because that would be the part that you use least. Whether it's a knife, a box cutter, a trapezoid blade, usually the inner part is the sharpest part because we use it less. Okay, so how's this? It's not perfect. But not bad. Because this isn't a nice straight line, that's just why. Mm -hmm. It's not so much, it's, it's, it's very small. One mil dip. I like that. That's 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 going to work. Okay, so let's do the other flesh side. It's going to be either Daniel side of this. Mangani. Hey, Daniel Mangani. Thank you very much, Daniel. Nice to see you here. Did you manage to um, find a solution for your air compressor and your airbrush? This side again, side and side, yeah. So let us in there. For a second, I thought because I thought I was doing it the other way around. Didn't know it would be there. I can imagine. I can imagine. But I think you'll find um, solutions for your compressor. Um, just to share like the question because this was quite an interesting question I was posed like uh, off off camera. Um, like uh, if uh, the airbrush that I use has its own dedicated compressor, and if you've been on the live streams before, you know that I use a small um, uh, like it's a very small compressor, very small unit, and basically that's because the airbrush came with the intent to be used for body paint. Now, as you can see that I am not so inclined, but uh, it was still a good piece of equipment to buy. Now, if I were to do it all over again, I would probably buy a bigger compressor and I would use a regulator to lower the pressure from the big tank onto the airbrush because I think there's a limit of like, I think 40 PSI that you should use depending on the paint. And usually the paint will tell you what you should use. So yeah, I think it was worth uh, sharing with everyone because it was a good um, sort of, I had to pause and think about it. I don't really use a lot of air, air, air compressors and stuff like that in my current shop. So yeah. I'm just, I'm just sorry, I'm just off camera. I'm just cleaning up the edges over here. So, I think that can go there for now. And now we can start mating pieces together. Now, this will be the tongue end, this will be the buckle end. I'm just going to try and match the curve because this seems to have a bit of an actual curve to it. I could be that I didn't cut it straight enough, but we'll see. Anyway, so we have metal spatula, contact cement. You've seen me use this before. Uh, basically, apply contact cement on either side, not in excess if possible. Let it dry a little bit and then make the two pieces together. And once you touch them together, they're they're sealed. However, adding a stitch is always good practice. So, Jennifer, what kind of airbrush do you have? Uh, it's a very cheap one I got off the internet. It's not a new water or anything. Um, but I, I do mean to buy a new water later on in my prop making career. Hobby, of course. 
Um, so far, I have never found the need to use such, uh, you know, high quality equipment. I don't even think it has a brand. Uh, somewhere back there or up there. So let's see if I can wipe the excess glue from the mat because I don't want that to be transferred onto the surface. So we'll wait a few minutes. Um, the trick with um, the trick with contact cement is to let it dry enough to be tacky but not wet. If it's wet, it's too early. If it's too dry, then it won't work. But it's probably easier to is easier to find it uh, wet rather than dry. It takes quite some time to dry off. So okay, there's another defect. Uh, see, it's tacky but not wet. It doesn't transfer glue onto my fingers. This side needs a little bit more. But now. Once you touch them together, that's it, and they're fused. So, that's it. Made it a little bit neater over here, but we'll put a nice saddle stitch there. And that's basically it. <laughs> that's the leather fused. That's how long it takes for, um, for it to cure. As soon as it touches, it's cured. Well, not cured. As soon as it touches, it adheres, but then it needs some time to cure. So we'll work on it a little bit more. I like to also just get a poly mallet, a piece of cloth on it, so I don't mark it and just give it, give it a couple of wax. To make sure sort of there's complete contact uh, usually when i use it on other materials i'll use a metal ma uh, hammer or something like that <laughs> traditional multi snack twisties not sponsored but if you'd like to sponsor me <laughs> Sure. Mm. So, using the scratch all, I'm going to find roughly the middle of where the joint is and mark one hole there and about one hole there. Try to line them up. Okay. About there. And I think somewhere about there should be fine with a little bit of line. <clears throat> okay, so now I have scribed two points as in a line and now I will use a slot punch it doesn't need to match on either side I'll just eyeball it and that should be fine okay so like starting from over there let's wax it so it's easy to use <clears throat> The rawhide. Old habits. That was my previous method before my rawhide one. This is much better. Okay. Went through. And if you see, I think it no, like this. You can use a single punch to open them up a little bit, should you need to. <coughs> the same on the other side. Now 
Now, in this case, since I'm noticing that it's a little bit too far off the edge, I can go and do a single slot there, but then it will be a little bit uneven, so I'd rather not do that. Maybe on this side. No, leave it as it is. Now later, we can go back and stitch them after dyeing, which brings me to the next item on the agenda. Before dying, actually. I have another. Thank you. So we'll start with this one. With this one, let's see if this. Yeah, yeah, just like bye -bye. Oh, bye bye. Thanks for joining. It was really nice to have you here. Now I'm going to round off one side, which will fold under the belt. So we'll make it look a little bit more professional, that's all. Okay. Let's round it in. Now this will be the slot where the belt buckle will go through. And then need to roughly center it on that hole which I marked earlier. I'm going to eyeball the top and bottom. I want to try and keep it parallel to the edges so you just see. Yeah, that's about right. Now, this is the belt buckle that we'll be using. It's a brass, antique brass belt buckle which goes Nicely with the hardware of the quiver in question. And this will be made like this. Okay. That's a perfect size there. Perfect size. Okay. So now I need to mark where the, the rivet will go. I need to decide whether I want a hidden rivet, two rivets, one rivet. I think I'm going to go for two rivets. Um, I think I'm going to go for a peening rivet because it's uh, in team with the quiver that I have. I'll go fetch the quiver later to show you. Um, but this is also, I made, yeah. So these will be hidden under. So what I'm going to do now is I'll sort of slide it back and keep the general shape. Get the belt buckle back and sort of mark eyeball roughly where the rivets will go. So one over there and the other one will be in line with it. So it's about Seven and a half mil down. So about seven and a half mil down. That depends. I need to make it further up. So let's put it about a centimeter in and a centimeter in. Perfect. I'll have one last snack. These are the peening rivets that I am using. Basically, I have to hammer them to flare them. So I found the best um, hole uh, punch for it. It's a 530 second, the number four craft tool punch. <coughs> now, Probably could have done with a smaller hole, but sort of it widens it a little bit. But anyway, the washer, the burr will be will be keeping it in place. Okay, see, 
to go there. Now I need to mark the holes on the other side. Now to do that I'm going to flip it surface to surface and mark with a scratch hole where the holes need to go. A light scratch would be more than enough. Okay. Also, especially since this is the underside, I don't really need to worry so much about what it looks like. And now these should line up nicely and they do. So this is the buckle side, it's done. On the other end we have the tongue side. Just for the sake of it, let's let's have a look and see how it goes around my waist. So that seems to be like enough tongue to have. So I'm not going to poke any holes yet, those come later, but I am going to give this an English point, which is this sort of curved point over here. So I'm going to about uh, eyeball it so that it is roughly in the middle, not skewed to one edge or the other. And that's a nice finish for a belt. Okay. Obviously, I cannot punch any holes for the pin, okay, on the tongue, but that will come later on when we are uh, after dying. Okay. So what's the time right now? It's almost six o'clock. So um, I think this is going to be another um, a bit of a long live stream. Um, I want to at least dye this first. So if we dye it, I can. Stop here, then I can post the rest of the results on Instagram. So, I'm going to take the edges, the corners, and I am going to give them what we call a beveling. Now, uh, this is an edge beveler, for example, it's basically a U-shaped, it's very tough to see on camera, but it's basically a U, it's like a scoop with a blade underneath, and it digs out, in order to show in a piece of scrap, it digs out the corners. Right? It's not very hard to see if you look at it freehand, but yeah. Like this, see? Gives it a bit of a bevel. That's why they call them an edge beveler. In this case, it's a thick piece of leather. I could use um, a deeper um, beveler. I'm going to use this because I think it gives it the best and nicest. Um, finish. Basically what I'm doing, I'm going to do is I'm going to go all around the edge and skive both, not skive, uh, bevel the top and the bottom surface and the, the flash side. I will also do the round the, the rounded areas later on as well. Now it's a little bit awkward to work like this but I'll do my best to sort of show you. Now we come to the joint. The joint is going to be a little bit difficult to, to do properly, so just take your time or basically use a better joint than I have. Okay, that's one half. Let's do the other half. Of the surface, I mean, we still need to do the flash side. You don't have to do this round bit, which is going to be hidden under the bucket. I just like doing it for completeness sake. That's all. Now, 
flush side. Oops. You can also hone these or sharpen them on a piece of strop and some rouge and basically they will become sharper to cut through, especially through the flesh side, which tends to grab the tool even more. to do and basically this technique minus the joint is usually is usually um, uh, how I make all my witcher belts costume belts etc etc hey Nick So how long have we been working on this belt? I think less than 45 minutes, about 30 minutes, something like that. Put that there. Let's see this is. Um, <laughs> I think we are in a good place right now. So we have, um, let's recap basically what we've done. We've, I, I cut the straps before before the live stream so that I won't have to maneuver a lot of a, lo a large piece of leather here. But I don't have a piece of leather which is long enough to go around my, my waist, so I had to join them, and I joined uh, like three pieces of leather with uh, contact cement, same glue that they used to you know to make shoes, etc., etc. I punched the hole so I can stitch it after it's dyed. I punched the hole so I can put the buckle through, rounded the edge on under the buckle, and put an English point on the tongue, and basically beveled all the edges so then I can round them with a slicker and burnish them so that they're sealed and nicely done using beeswax. But that is the absolute last step, I believe. So, uh, last step before assembly, that is. So I think at this point we can start the dyeing. Let's remove everything which will not need to be dyed. I have a nice batch of light brown prepared. Just to have an idea of what this looks like, I can dip a piece of scrap in. It's a bit darker, I think, but it, once dried, usually it tends to lighten a little bit. So that's cool. I'm in my dober. I had a dauber, it's a bit of a mess, I need to clear up this this box sometime soon. No, oh, there it's right in front of me. And I will need a piece of cloth. Cool. Let's start with the bottom, with the flash side. I have a dauber to apply the dye. Going to be moving on on the flash side first, then flipping over, going on the top side. But first, edges. I always start with the edges. So let's start on this side. I think it was a good idea. Uh, Chief to do this all in one color because the joint would have looked a little bit jarring in two colors. So that's one side of the edges. Other side. Now this piece will not be antiqued, as I have antiqued other leather working pieces before. 
because my uh, quiver is not antiqued. It's just got a coat of resist on top of the die, just to keep sort of protect it a little bit. Um, die tends to sort of go mute or a little bit dull with time if you don't seal it in. So I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen by applying some resist. Okay. So basically, I'm just going to apply dye on the flash side. You don't usually need to wipe on the flash side because um, it tends to get absorbed in very easily. While I'm doing that, I'm keeping an eye out to make sure that I didn't miss any spots on the edge. Because once I burnish them with beeswax, um, that's the color that they have. Beeswax tends to also seal the color in, so it's kind of a resist. Okay. It's okay if we get some dye on the top side, since this is going to be the same color all throughout. Um, also, one last thing, it's good to put a carving before dyeing because then you'll dig up a lot of undyed leather. In this case, I decided not to go for a carving, even though like in the beginning of the stream I thought I might. I just prefer this as a plain belt. I don't want to take, you know, take attention away from the quiver, which is the main piece. Um, like the, the, how shall we call it? The main item. Yeah. So let's go. And now on the top, I like to dye and then wipe so that the dye doesn't pool. I can always go back and add more if need be, but I can't take away. So this way, I make sure to have an even coating. Also, where the tongue is, make sure to get all the inside edges where the buckle goes. I mean. Seeing any areas that are a little bit uh, lighter than the others, try to add more dye to them. This is a water soluble dye. Um, so it's a water-based dye, it's just very easy to mix more, and it seeps into the leather very easily. So it's both an advantage and a disadvantage, because you have to take care not to oversaturate certain areas. Like you will see, for example, the edges of where the, uh, the belts meet, that's going to be a little bit saturated more than the rest. For the very simple reason that it is uh, seeping through the side pores and not just through the surface. Okay, and over there, there's a little bit of residual glue. It's okay, it won't show. I'm not going to continue working on this piece like this. And that is the whole piece dyed. One thing to note also, if you don't want to have any defects in your leather, any kind of defect in the leather, this isn't a mark that I made. This is just inherent in the leather itself, in the grade of the leather. The dye will make it come out. I don't mind that. I find that actually better. It gives the, the piece a little bit of, um, what do you call it, character. So I'm actually quite happy with that. Just going over it again. Of to even the color a little bit more, it deepens it as well, gives it a little bit more saturation. Since the vegetable leather usually has a bit of a not tan but a bit of a lighter tone, um, it tends to mute the dyes, at least in my experience. So I, I, I tend to uh, overdo it a little bit, it always pulls back in the end, so um, it doesn't really matter that. 
much if I overdo it. Okay. Good. Cool. So that is the dyeing done. I'm going to let it um, hang for a second. I can already feel it's a little bit dry, so I can very, very soon start working on it. So all I did was I just hung up the belt over there to dry. We need a few minutes at most. Um, it's it's we live in such a climate over here that um, it really doesn't take very long to dry. Just going to clean the dauber so I can reuse it next time. Good. So I'll take this time to sort of clean up a little bit my workspace because I'm in the home stretch. Um, so the next thing to do will be applying the resist on top of the dye to sort of preserve the... Let me change the camera. <laughs> so the next thing to do will be to apply a resist on the leather that will give it a little bit of a sheen, a bit of a satin sheen and sort of preserve it, give it a little bit of protection from the elements. It won't make it waterproof, but at least a little bit water resistant. So even if it rains a little bit, while I'm wearing it, it shouldn't be an issue. After the resist is applied on the surface alone, I am going to uh, stitch those uh, stitches that I marked already. It should take me like 30 seconds each. It's not difficult. I'm going to use a black um, thread because um, black thread was used on the quiver, so it matches. Also, I am going to burnish the edges by using uh, beeswax and either the drill press, I've got a slicker on the drill press, or I can use one of these, it's a burnisher, a slicker, to make sure all the edges are nice and sealed. Once that is done, I can put the buckle in, I can rivet it, I can rivet it shut, and then I can start working on the pinholes that go where the, you know, for the pin, for the buckle pin to sort of fasten the, the belt. One thing that I have not done yet is make a belt keeper, a tongue keeper, which is that loop on the belt, um, which keeps the tongue in place. I may do that off camera. It's very simple, just a piece of uh, leather. It's just a thin leather strip, dyed the same way and resisted the same way, um, because I'm not quite sure whether I'll need it. Um, so, I, I mean, to be honest, it's just very simple. I might as well do it. I've got, uh, yeah, usually I use something like this. I have a piece, a thin strip of leather. Mm -hmm. On a belt this thick, I usually tend to go a little bit thick, like this. So I've got this strip, which I, I always cut down to use for string keepers. I can very, very easily make one. So um, I just need to make sure that... Uh, sorry. So I need a bit about this big. Blade flat. Okay. I like to use the same kind of leather so it has the same color after I um, I dye it. But this is so simple to make. Same technique I've been using all along. Just mark where the edges need to go. Mark where you are punching your holes. This. I just need two holes, maybe three holes. Uh, no, even numbers are better. So either four or two. So one, two. No. So let's do two in the middle. Should be more than enough than what we need. Going to eyeball it. It doesn't need to be precise at all. Done. 
the only trick you need to keep in mind is if you are going to edge bevel, edge bevel the long sides only because the middle part needs to mate like this. Okay. Or rather than that, it's a very simple thing to do, and it also is very handy to have on the belt. Cool. Done. I can dip dye it if I want, I just won't bother. I'm going to take the Dover again. Re dye the whole piece. Bottom. Top. Make sure it is amply covered. And that is done. That's how long it takes to make a tongue keeper. Probably less than two minutes. Hmm? Yeah, you need to sew it shut, of course, but that comes afterwards. <laughs> so let's check the belt. Cool, but not too wet. While we prepare everything else, it will be ready to use and to start working on. We don't need any further dye for now, we just need a little bit more dye at the end to touch up some areas. So, um, resist. Resist. We'll need this for now, we'll need it later. Mix your resist well enough, make sure it's not frozen. If it's frozen, throw it away. Just an old brush. And I apply the resist on the top coat, on the top surface only. And let it to set, let it set. In a second, it will start drying off very, very quickly. In the meantime, I'll start working on the belt. Now I will have brush strokes because obviously I'm not applying it with applying it with a critter gun. Maybe some. Uh, fingerprints maybe on it if I touch it too too quickly so one way I sort of work around that is to wipe off the excess with a piece of cloth avoiding the top coat um, avoiding the, the, the surface and that sort of gives it enough time for the resist to start seeping into the pores without uh, hardening on the surface you can already see the difference between one side which was applied and one side which wasn't. See how, how it glistens? It makes it look so professional. It's a very simple operation. Yes, of course, there's resource cost involved, but like everything else, it's, it, this is really worth its, its salt. It also darkens the dye a little bit, so keep that in mind. Cool. Done. And done. Don't clean up the brush because otherwise it gums up and then it will leave a lot more strokes. to stitch these two stitch lines. I'm not even going to bring out my stitching pony for this. It's a very simple stitch to do. When it's short, it's not difficult, so 
blunt tip needles so I won't poke any extra holes than, uh, any more than I need to. So that's one and that's two. So I have to poke myself. Yeah, so uh, I just take this much. enough for now same technique I've demonstrated before you put the thread through needle goes through the thread so that it locks itself on the eye one side and the other I'm going to use a saddle stitch for this, so basically I'm just going to go through. Um, I think for this, however, I am going to go over the corners, or shall I not? Yes, let's go over the corners and the edges. So I'm going to sort of do a loop around the edge. The trick with saddle stitching is to constantly tighten the stitch because otherwise it's going to go loose on you and it won't be as nice or consistent consistency in these operations is like the most important thing anything will look good if it's consistent And I'm going to go around the back and actually let's do it on this side first. So if you like this, make it neat, then to the back and to the front, tighten it nicely. There was a knot at the back, I could feel it. Okay, so for now, I'm going to just go one up, go through and then tie a knot at the back so it is secure I use a reef knot or a box knot or a square knot or double overhand I think, I'm not sure if they call it double overhand and then this trapezoid blade is a little bit loose I will have to change it soon the leather thread uh, the, the sewing thread should just cut off the edge of it and the blade lighter or torch and you just touch it there so it is molten and done so that's one side of the stitch let's do another And now the other side, the other needle. <coughs> blunt tipped needles are really good for this sort of purpose. When you're stitching, uh, I would recommend using blunt tipped needles for the very simple reason that they don't poke through the leather um, other than through the holes that you intended to stitch. Tighten. Do 
is actually a bit dangerous. I'm going to move the blade away. Incredibly sharp. Titan. Titan. That seemed to go faster than the previous one, but basically we are done now. Titan. Now from the back, I go to the front. Make sure that goes here. This goes through, so we can just tighten it now. Go around the back as we did earlier. Go to the back. Tie off a knot. Very simply. One and two. Cut off the excess and burn the edges. Just press them flat so that they don't remain proud, and that is the main construction of the belt. So, next. It's almost dry enough, uh, we can start burnishing the edges. What, sorry? That's because of the resist. It becomes uh, that glossy because of the resist. Blotchy? No, that will have to... That It's blotchy because I didn't give it enough time to properly cure. Uh, but that will even out with time. Yes, because it will... The thing is this. Um, it won't dry through the surface now. It will dry through the flash side. So it will have a much longer dry time. Which I'm fine with, to be honest. I mean, I won't use it until next week, so... Okay, preparing the needles for the other part. My keeper. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I need a little bit more beeswax. Hey, there I go. Nice brand new block of beeswax. Mm. Basically, I'm going to... Just put beeswax on the burnished edges. <laughs> okay. And basically the process is we'll take the burnisher and basically melt the beeswax into the pores, sealing it. And all it does, um, it, it makes it look really slick and professional. Now, it, it, this isn't a matter of how hard you press the, the slicker, it's a matter of speed. So, the more friction you generate, the better. You don't need to press in, because you, I tend, at least for myself, I tend to deform the leather if I press too hard. So, I will go over this on the drill press, because it's just so much easier. It's basically the same thing, but I've got a spinning one. So. In fact, that is what I will do because I don't have the patience for this. Right, so, quarter past six, so I think by 15 minutes we'll be done. So, I'm just going to put these wax on all the edges. Don't need to put a lot, just enough to mark it. point where I have too much stuff on the workbench to work comfortably, but it's all right. You can also do this with some water, some gum uh, tragacant, <coughs> and actually I'll leave this here for now. Uh, gum trag, 
Uh, you can use tokenol, which is a Japanese product. It's actually very good. Uh, you can use beeswax, paraffin wax, water, anything. So I'm just going to go over to my drill press over there. So you have to excuse me for a second. Um, I'm going to come back in like a minute after I go through all the edits. I'm just going to mute it so there isn't a lot of noise in the background. Now, I I did the sound keeper, and as you can see, the edges are nice and sealed, and they've got a bit of a gloss to them as well, which is due to the beeswax. One thing I can do is take the cloth and remove the excess beeswax from the surface so that it doesn't mar it. You can also burnish with a cloth, by the way. If you have a bit of a wool cloth, you can also burnish using this. A lot of like artisan leather workers tend to do this. I don't have the patience for it. I prefer wooden burnishing tools. So I'll do the belt very quickly and I'll be with you in a second. Okay, that wasn't very long at all. I was going to remove the excess beeswax from the surface, sort of giving it a little bit of a bop too. off buffing the surface with a piece of ideally you would use uh, like raw sheep wool for this um, but this you have to do what sorry it's so much nicer in real life I know the camera doesn't do it justice but unfortunately that's because of the you know the live stream okay what well, I mean it doesn't look bad on camera mm -hmm. It's just that it is more blotchy on camera than it is on real life, in real life. I think because the camera can pick up a little bit more subtle differences. Now, <clears throat> we're in the home stretch. Now we need to make some noise. <laughs> I have an anvil, nippers, rivets, buckle. goes through the slot, these go through the back, we align them and we pass. Let's start with one rivet first and then we'll do the other rivet because otherwise we'll never manage. Okay. Now 
Now, the way these rivets work, I have a short video on it, so if you'd like to hear a little bit more about them, you can visit that short. But basically, you've got a post, which is this part. You've got a burr or a washer, okay? And that goes over the post. Now, you can't press it by hand, so you'll have to sort of tack it in place using the tool that comes with it. Okay. And basically, for this, I use the poly mallet because I don't like using the rawhide on this. It may deform the mallet. So, okay, that's one rivet in place. The other rivet, bear on it. Use an anvil to obviously to keep it because the, the bottom of these posts are flat, so you can use an anvil. Uh, there are different kinds of anvils. Um, I don't like this one, for example, which are made for snaps where have, they have a concave dip in them. Okay, so you can use them on rounded rivets or snaps in that case. So those are set in place, they won't come off on their own. So now we just cut them down to size. Leave enough so that you can uh, pin them and flatten them. That's one. They may have left a little bit too much over there, so I'm going to cut even more. Hello Minerva. Brass is tough. Okay, I'm going to pin it over right now. Um, I have got my hammer. Let me maybe mute it. There's going to be a lot of noise. Okay, that was the riveting done. Brass is a lot more difficult and a lot tougher than <clears throat> it's a lot tougher than copper. I got copper rivets. Um, really nice to work with. Really soft metal to work with. Okay, so we're done with them, and basically that is the piece. Secured. I have enough leeway for the pin to open. So let us finish the tongue keeper. Tongue keeper is very easy. Let's remove that. I've already got the, the line prepared. Okay. Maybe it's best if we just poke the holes into the hole, just to widen them a little bit. Okay. I was going to put like a cross, like an X, to stitch them shut. Okay. That's basically the extent of the stitching needed for this. Maybe I, I like to sort of double back and do it again just to just to be safe. You really don't have to, but you can if you want. And then we do the same thing. So that one over there. Close here. Tie it with a knot. Okay. 
that look of desperation. No, it's when you couldn't get the access card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I hate it when that happens, but oh well. Okay. Let's cut off. Burn the inside. Be careful not to burn the leather. If you burn the leather, it will, you know. Not such a bad idea. Uh, not, not such a good idea. Okay, so. Tongue keeper. Maybe a little bit loose. I may have to trim it off a little bit. But. Good for now. So. Let's see how the belt fits. Perfect. Now I need to know where I need to put the first hole. And I think somewhere around here should be fine. Don't mark it with an all. Right there. Now. Now. I need to find the right size hole for this. So probably this might be a little bit too small. Yep. I have to go one hole larger. This may be a little bit too large then. Um, you can always cut a bigger hole, I suppose. Uh, no, let's do this. I mean, I guess they can stretch a little bit, so yeah. Rawhide mallet. Just need to center it on the hole. Try to be very light so I don't go widen the, the hole more than I need to. Yeah, that works just nicely. This is a little bit too much, so I will need to. No, but I, I'm going. No, honestly, it's really not tight at all. I'm going to have the quiver hanging on one side, so yeah. I just don't want to get any dye on the white shirt as much as possible, if possible. So, um, one last thing to do is, uh, I have noticed that the dye has permeated through the leather, so I don't need to touch up the holes. I'm just going to mark intervals in between holes. So let's say I'm going to take uh, an inch and a half from the edge of the hole. Or maybe an, an, an inch will be too much, I think. An inch and a quarter, let's do an inch and a quarter. Okay, again, where did the punch go? Going to keep this up until I get uh, about here, which means I made the belt a little bit too long. That's I mean, it's not such a big deal. It gives me room to grow. Not that I need to. Which is like the opposite of what I need right now. But I, I think that's enough. Let's do another hole so it's fine. Okay. This is the belt. And that's quite nice. I quite like that. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it to dry properly and for the dye to cure and the resist to cure properly. So um, I'm going to hang it on the garage door for a day or two. Other than, that, other than that, the belt is done. Take a quick. Yeah. 
Oh, thank you very much. So, huh? Me. So, uh, it's about half past six, right on the mark. Um, okay, that was fun. Fun. It was a little bit under pressure there to sort of finish it on time. I could have done with another half an hour or an hour or so, but we did it. Um, what I would have done differently probably would be to let the dye uh, set or cure a little bit better, um, a little bit longer, let the resist cure properly, but now the resist can cure uh, overnight. Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to be applying anti antique, but if I were, I would let it uh, set properly. So, Chief, what do you think? Approved? Approved. Oof, I love working under pressure sometimes. Two hour old coffee tastes like victory. Good. <laughs> so, thank you very much for joining this. Um, Thank you very much for joining this live stream today. Um, I'm sorry if it's been a little bit hectic. I've been a little bit all over the place. Um, but there were some things I wanted to do. So we changed the wrap on the bow. Changed the leather wrap. Did the top part as well. So I'll take some photos of me shooting that bow and some videos. And I'll post them on, on uh, Instagram. So make sure to go follow me there if you don't already follow me on Instagram. Um, in the coming weeks, so because uh, we'll, we're due to go to the range, I don't think this week, maybe the week after, so I'll have some photos there. Speaking of next week, um, next week there won't be a live stream on Sunday, um, so basically there we'll skip a week as I have some um, engagements to attend. The week after, will we be in Gozo? Yes, so probably we'll have, sorry? No, not when I will be in Gozo, for sure. It's okay, but I think I can have a live stream anyway, but it will be on a computer. So I might have a guest um, then also um, to sort of, we'll be doing some 3D modeling. Maybe I'll learn a few skills as well. So I don't think you'll want to miss that, but I'll post more on Instagram uh, closer to the date. Um, what else, what else, what else? Next week is a project video week. So tomorrow I'll be working a lot, and even probably tonight, I'll be working a lot on uh, the next project. So yeah, um, hmm? big things happening, yeah. Okay, so half part six, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Kurt, and it's been such a pleasure making this, the belt and the leather wrap on the bow. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining. Thank you for commenting, everyone who who took their time to say something or ask a question or you know laugh at me as I am <laughs> frustrated at cutting off an excess of rivets. Uh, I hope that this was enjoyable. And if you'd like to see more projects, there's always more that they're working projects on my YouTube channel. So make sure to go give them a look. Um, thank you very much for joining once more. Keep making stuff. Have a wonderful evening. And as well, as I just said, have a wonderful evening, and I hope to see you around. Keep making stuff, and yeah, take care. Thank you very much for joining. Bye-bye. Say bye, Chief. Bye. bye.